Hi, I'm Ted O'Conn, the Executive Director of the Community Oncology Alliance, otherwise known as COA. And today on Open Mic, what I'm going to do is uh, give you a little view into what's happening with COVID-19 and the impact on uh, cancer screenings, because it is a little uh, concerning. Uh, we have uh, partnered with uh, Avalier Health in terms of doing an analysis specifically on uh, cancer screenings and the shortfalls that you'll see in some of the key findings. So what I'm going to be doing is sharing some of those results with you, and then I'm going to be talking about what we're what we're doing it about it at uh, at COA. So the first thing we did is we basically the purpose of the study was a retrospective analysis um, that 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 really looked at the variation in healthcare surface utilization and and what happened in terms of COVID nineteen. So. As you can see here on the slide, the, the data sources that we used and, and specifically use the Medicare fee for service uh, claims data and um, looked at basically um, uh, the, the, the site of care and different site of cares. We looked at uh, tele, we looked at telehealth utilization, we looked at treatments, but really what I want to talk about is what we see in terms of uh, cancer screening. So this was actually um, the percent of claims uh, for cancer-related telehealth E&M services. And, and the message here is what you see that is in the practice setting, the independent uh, community oncology setting, high, high level of telehealth utilization versus uh, relatively smaller utilization to start in the institution or the hospital system. That, that didn't... Uh, that, that didn't, I'm not meaning to demean sort of the hospital setting, but it's an artifact of two things. Number one is hospitals were all uh, focused on treating COVID patients and dealing with the pandemic. And the other thing is that I think that independent practices were a little more flexible in terms of the uptake of uh, uh, telehealth services. So I think that's why you're, you're, you're seeing that. Um, the, the other thing that we saw was this presents sort of a relative change in billing frequencies for select cancer screening services. So what this means is, is we looked at uh, mammograms and colon screenings and lung screenings and prostate screenings through the beginning of the pandemic, what you see is a severe drop off. This is a severe drop off. And actually we've now looked at more recent data and they continue the um, trends that we've seen in July. As you may remember, uh, we had a first surge, obviously, in the May-April um, time period in terms of COVID-19. Uh, then we had another surge in uh, July, and currently we're coming out of another surge that we see during the sort of the January, February uh, uh, time frame. But this is really striking when you look at this and you think about it, how far off we're, we are, especially in, in mammograms. And even though we've made up a little... Um, uh, we've made up a little progress in, in June and then a fall off in July. We are so far behind the, the curve that it's really uh, scary. And this is actually the relative change in billing frequencies for cancer-related surgeries, uh, mastectomies, um, uh, colon procedures, prostate procedures, and you see the same kind of fallout. And particularly when you look at the this, this screening, the fact of the matter is that you're seeing if you don't have people that are screened, they're actually not getting any surgeries, they're not getting any treatments. And the problem is that when they do present, uh, they present with more advanced disease, uh, terrible for the patient and, 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 and very costly to treat. So this is some of the, as I was describing before, the surge in COVID-19 cases, you saw the first up, up, the first wave taking place in April, the May time frame. then we saw a little back off, then we saw another surge, and then we saw a surge that went up in October, and really a big surge that, um, that we've seen recently due to the new variants and the relaxation and a lot of, um, a lot of the restrictions that came along with uh, the pandemic. So if you look at this and you say, okay, you paint this picture and you look at the picture and you say, screenings are down and uh, patients aren't getting screened. Obviously to begin with back in March and April of, of last year, 
the reason why patients weren't getting screened because everything was shut down. Hospitals were overwhelmed, overwhelmed with COVID-19. And in particular, um, hospitals shut down screening programs. So you basically uh, didn't have that. And you had patients who were afraid to come out of their house or couldn't get transportation. Someone who may have been uh, older, dependent on a son or a granddaughter to take them to, uh, to get screened, they couldn't. So everything was about COVID and not screening. So as a result, one of the things that, that we are doing is um, we have uh, raised a significant amount of money to really conduct uh, a major sort of PSA campaign, which we would call Time to Screen. And it's not just a PSA or public service announcement. It's really intended to, to, to say that this is a campaign because there are a lot of good messages being out there about the, the, the need for Americans to continue getting their screening for cancer. But the problem is, in some cases, they don't know where to go. They don't know what's open. There are no solutions there. So, you know, part of our message is detecting cancer early may save your life. Uh, there have been a number of stories in the New York Times, in uh, CBS this morning, that, that show the impact that, for example, when women get screened later on, uh, their breast cancer, which may have been at you know a stage three, is now stage four, and it's a lot, a lot worse. And I said it's also a lot more expensive to treat. Uh, this particular endeavor that we've launched is a collaboration between us, COA, and Cancer Care. Cancer Care is a large philanthropic organization that provides cancer support services, financial aid, and uh, other support to cancer patients. And we're really um, uh, we're really proud. We've done a number of different things with cancer care over the last five years or so, and we're really proud of this one. This is a public awareness campaign. As I said, it's called Time to Screen. Uh, we basically have three goals in mind. One is to educate the, the public on the importance of getting screened and taking care of their health, provide solutions and make it easy for people to schedule screening appointments. As I said, a lot of the problems is people, a lot of the problems are that people don't know where to go. And in that process, we wanna emphasize safety that you know, with modified procedures and masking and social distancing, there's no reason you shouldn't get, you shouldn't get screened for uh, cancer. Uh, we have a number of uh, free consumer tools, starting out with a hotline uh, that's answered by trained uh, uh, social uh, workers at Cancer Care. So 1-855-53-SCREEN uh, is meant to be pick up the line. And basically, if you don't know where to go, you don't know what to do, you have any questions, the, the trained professionals on the line can basically direct you accordingly. We have a time to screen website that has education and information. It's www.timetoscreen.org and a database of screening locations and options for major cancer types. So as I said, the problem is it's one thing to say to somebody, go get screened for cancer. If hospitals are overrun, they've, they've, they've basically, and, and other facilities have basically shut down uh, temporarily their screening facilities, then where do you go? So the whole idea behind this campaign is not just awareness, but uh, solutions. So um, I really wanna thank the opportunity basically on open mic to just give you a little sort of 10 minute pitch on the fact that it's so important to get screened. It's so important for uh, individuals out there, Americans to realize that even in the face of COVID-19, uh, they should not, uh, they, they, they should not pr prolong or procrastinate in terms of screening because um, it's so important. And uh, we have the full study results. I'm actually uh, a co-author on one of the studies on screenings. You can find that at the COA website at www.communityoncology.org. And I really implore you to visit the time to screen.org, uh, time to screen.org to schedule your cancer screening and access other resources. And if you have any follow-up questions, if anybody out there is uh, listening to this and say, I have a question, you can either dial the hotline or if you have any follow-up questions or feedback or ideas, send us an email at info at coacancer.org. We're always listening. And you know, again, I wanna wrap this up by saying, this is so important. Look, 
uh, COVID-19 has basically turned our lives upside down. The problem is that cancer doesn't care. It doesn't wait for COVID to be over. It doesn't take a pause while we're dealing with COVID-19. Cancer keeps marching forward. And as a result of that, if you don't know that you have it, you could possibly have it, you haven't basically gone in for your screening, then the results can be worse down the road. So that's why it's so important. So again, I thank for the opportunity on open mic uh, to give you just a little uh, pitch, a little information about screening shortfalls and the need to uh, uh, keep in touch. And this is the time to screen. So thank you.